time for another data miner cutout. Hello and welcome to another Bringing the Thunder. You've reached me at a pivotal time in my life. I finally have merch. Look at this, Bringing the Thunder. Very exclusive merch as well. Uh, you won't find this one on the swag shop yet. It's very exclusive. If you want one of these amazing t-shirts, you can get them by sending in a question because I'm doing AMAs, Ask Me Anything, as a sighting uh, under the umbrella of Bringing the Thunder. Uh, today, not an AMA, however. Today, it's Friday. And Friday, we're doing a kata. And we're doing a kata with an old familiar, Michiel Oda. Uh, for the people who haven't seen Michiel yet, who are you? What do you do? And what are we going to be doing today? Uh, hello. Um, so, I am Michiel Oda. I am a senior uh, DevOps uh, engineer mm -hmm. here at Skynet Communications for seven and a half years already. All right. Um, so, I currently working mostly with uh, CICD and DS, all the tooling mm -hmm. around it, mm -hmm. uh, so maybe already worked with that as well. So there are, have been some previous katas for Indeed. that. Uh, but I also previously worked on IDP, so that's yes. what I will be showing you today, how to get started with IDP and basically right. discover an at least professional, at least already one element to start off with. Right, so okay. Uh, first question, what's IDP? IDP stands for Infrastructure Discovery and Provisioning. Infrastructure Discovery and Provisioning. Yes, it's okay. quite a mouthful, so that's Indeed. why IDP is a lot easier. Yes. And it's also not everything. IDP can do a lot more as well, but then the name would be ridiculous. <laughs> so, um, so the so, basic stuff is IDP. So parts. it's, uh, it's a, a module you install separately or it's yes. installed? So it's something you can now find on the catalog re okay. since uh, recently. Um, it's uh, actually now available on the catalog. Previously, it was separately. All right. Um, and IDP is just a yeah, search on, on catalog. You download it or you deploy it, basically. Okay. And then you can start working with it. It's All right. quite straightforward. So, okay. Infrastructure and blah, 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 blah. Provisioning. I heard that word. That yes. seems like a key word. So it's about provisioning your agent. It's yes. So the core concept is uh, you set up some configuration with my right. admin side part to say like, hey, scan my network uh, where uh, this eight miner or IDP is set, uh, okay. situated. And then depending on other configurations, it will check, hey, which kind of device product is there on that location? Is this a Cisco? Okay router or switch or something is this another device and so on okay based on that it shows all those discovered devices and then you can say hey create elements for it and it automatically provision provisions your data miner right so basically it's the setup of your system becomes a lot easier with that yeah instead of having to make hundreds of elements and yourself, need to know every ip address and so on you don't need that, that can help or even do it completely automatically yes Indeed. that's impressive uh, how do we get started? Any prerequisites we should know of? Yes. Uh, so for the latest IDP, the 1.5 mm -hmm. uh, update that's on the catalog, you need okay. at least state minor 10.3. 10.3, okay. But preferably 10.4 or 10.4.3, because in, if in between you need to first install a different package, that restarts your data miner one last time, uh, okay. and then install the catalog item. Okay. So but that's only a short uh, range, basically, of data miner versions where you need to do that, okay. starting from 10.4 or 10.4.3, yeah. you don't need to do that, and it's just download the catalog. Yeah, or you can spin up a DOS. Or you can spin up a DOS, which is what I did. It's a lot easier. Okay, <laughs> yeah, so it does work indeed on the DOS yes, system as well. Yes, it works fully on the DOS system. Okay. Um, I did that for myself. Uh, do note, for this specific kata, mm -hmm. we need to have a data miner that's running on a Windows server, specifically. Okay. Uh, but that's generally what most people have, or if you run a DOS, right. which will be there as well. Okay, cool. Okay, so either have a data miner of a high enough version, 10.5, I think, was the best one. Four. Four, sorry, 10.4, or spin up a DOS, yeah. and then we jump in. Yeah, and make sure it's cloud connected as well, if you don't have a DOS. Yeah, okay, and make sure it's cloud connected. Indeed. But All right. By default. So let's have a look. Let's jump in. What's yeah. the first step? So we go to catalog, um, mm -hmm. and then we just search on IDP. You will see there's several other items, but you just search for the application package. If mm -hmm. on the left, you can also select package and it becomes a little bit easier. Okay. So there we have everything. Mm -hmm. uh, let's make sure. Oh, let's see refresh that it realizes. Yeah, okay. So now we can see we have a deploy button. Download button is only internal. Okay. Can ignore that one. And let's head to my okay. data miner data and it starts deploying. Okay. Yeah, so basic, uh like the prerequisites and others you install and install package but in this case it's 
not actually an exercise, it's the actual IDP. Yeah, so this is the actual IDP so that is installed. So pretty much a production environment thing or a staging thing, but it's the act, what I'm trying to say, it's the actual software package. Yeah. It's and not it's, just an exercise or no, it's the full a, a demo, package. an example, it's the real one. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we're deploying that on a DOS system. Yeah. Um, Okay, and what is that actually doing in the background then? So it will install the necessary protocols, drivers, connectors, uh, okay. and automation scripts and everything else that's required for it. Okay. And in addition to that, it will use the default settings to install IDP already. So by the time okay. this package has been fully uh, deployed, mm -hmm. IDP is already fully ready to start be using. It's already installed, the element is there, everything is already set up. Okay. So it's just a few clicks and you can already start working with it. Okay. and. So you mentioned automation scripts and protocols. So in the background, it's using all of that to, yeah. to run and do all the scanning and all of that. Um, I'm going to guess we're going to be sh shown then the, the basics of how to do initial yeah. set. I find it a little difficult to imagine that it would just realize what everything is by default. Or? Yeah. That's why with the, uh, the 1.5 package of uh -huh. IDP, we also included some default CI types. Uh, CI types. Forgot the actual abbreviation okay. of CI. <laughs> I think it's configuration <laughs> item, something like that. Okay. But in short, we have a CI type and discovery profiles. Uh, CI type is basically saying, hey, the elements that I want to be created needs to have this protocol with that version. It uh, needs to have those templates and all, all different okay. kinds of configurations that you can uh, think of. Okay. And discovery profile is, uh, for example, you have an SNMP discovery profile to say yes. like, hey, the default system OID parameters, you can create your own discovery profiles to say like, hey, the specific type of OID that needs okay. to be built, which is being used in the discovery process then. Okay, so a discovery profile is the one that says... Uh, how? As, how to find the data, SNMP or, or, or TCP, IP, HTTP, mm -hmm. whatever. And then the CI type is linked to a connector, to a specific yeah. like Microsoft platform or a Cis example. Cisco or something. It's, yeah. And that CI type then is like specifically to say... This protocol, that these is, configurations. And that so. is how you find a, a Cisco and how you create the element, the standard default element yeah. for it. For sure. So that allows you to do things like fill in some parameters already? Or is uh, that... that is a possibility, uh, okay. depending on how far you want to go with your CI type. For today, we will just show the basic default. The basics, Just okay. create an element. But you can modify those CI types to include a lot of extra stuff. Okay. Um, like in the later cat us, there will also be examples on how cool. to do, for example, configurations. Okay. Should we have a look if we've yeah. got the IDP installed? I think we deployed it. So yes, as it's... you can see, a new view has been created. The okay. Data Miner Infrastructure Discovery and Provisioning. View. Right, IDP. <laughs> IDP. In here, we have multiple views. We have devices, we have infrastructure. Those are currently empty because there is nothing provisioned yet. Mm -hmm. And then under applications, you have our main Data Miner IDP right. element. Yeah, the big manager, the coordinator. Yeah. Okay, so that one is probably going to be our main Yeah, access. that's the that's the main access for IDP itself either. Okay. So, first off, let's head over to the admin side. Okay. Because nothing works fully out of the box. We okay. need to do a little bit. So, as you can see here, uh, by default, we go to the CI types. That's the most used one. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have already some default ones here. So, yeah, those are the ones that are IDP defaults origin. and the CI types being the items that identify Cisco Manager, Microsoft Platform, or what the Harmonix and MX yeah. and Linux platform. So we've got some basics in there. And okay. So today we will be using the Microsoft Platform. Okay. That's uh, used for basically data miner servers to just monitor themselves to see how much CPU I am and so on. Yes, can take right. That's yes. solution. But we have that, but we first okay. need to also uh, find it. So that's why we have the discovery tab where yes. you also see we have a default Microsoft platform because Microsoft is being discovered via WMI. Yes, WMI is indeed in the background, usually how it communicates in the OS. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we don't need to do anything for discovery profiles for this element because we are running okay. it locally. If you want to discover elements remotely, then you uh, generally need to edit this and then also include some credentials to say like, hey, uh, you need to 
have yes. these credentials to security find just to make sure because otherwise yeah that would be insane otherwise if so. you have a very <laughs> open network yeah. without any credentials well, technically it's possible but it's not advised unlikely but yeah. but so you don't on need a that. local you don't need no. it i love hitting that that means no no and it's no, nothing to do there okay next up has a scan ranges to say like hey from this ip address to this ip address search for whatever is undefined right so it'll crawl over every ip yeah. and like give it a quick poke to yeah see depending what on what you configure so we will create a new one okay so we can give it a name i will just call it local now mm -hmm. and because we are just searching one device locally i mm -hmm. will just uh, put in the local host address okay and then on to one yes so we've ranged it to one server just yeah. for the exercise for the kata. Indeed, but you can do that for your own network, you know, your own IP networks, and you can configure those. Okay. Do then we head up to the next part. Okay, can I ask before yeah, we sorry. continue? Do we need like some special uh, firewall provisions or something? Because I can imagine something that has to like crawl over yeah. the entire network, probably that's going to be blocked by default or depends because we basically use the same polling mechanisms uh, for example SMP gets and so on okay. uh, that the regular devices the regular protocols also are using ah okay so, so if those are blocked then yeah the, okay the, so the as long as you can access a device through for example the web interface for example from that server it shouldn't theory work yeah indeed and if not contact your IT department <laughs> indeed <laughs> okay. uh, generally that's the case okay Cool. So, so next then we say how do we want to discover devices with this scan range mm -hmm. so you have some options to say like hey discover it by default with just discovery profiles okay in our case we can say hey we want to discover a specific ci type and then we have the list of all the ci types okay. we will select just the max of platform to reduce as well the amount of calls being sent mm -hmm. and then this is maybe something for it security or uh, uh, teams to think. sure ping first uh, okay. If ping is disabled, make sure you also disable that here. Uh, otherwise, right. it could not work properly. Indeed. Okay. So for now, it doesn't really matter because on a DAS system, or at least currently, it's possible. Mm -hmm. But I have disabled it either way. So now the scan range is there. It's mm -hmm. been set up. Um, that's basically it for configuration up front. Now okay. we can actually start on the discovery. Right. The discovery... Go to inventory again to the start. Okay. Currently see managed elements that is managed by IDP is currently empty. Right. We go to the discovered. That's the main page you will use. And then you have here a drop down that contains all the scan ranges that you have configured. So as you can see, we have now one called local. Yeah. With the local range, which is just one to seven zero yes. one. Okay. You click discover. I give it a few seconds okay. and then you will see one pop up and now it already found the server. Okay, yeah. Okay, so it says you've done a discovery and it found one element and that it could create. Yeah, that it could create. It's not there yet. No, it's not there yet. So we have more information to say, like, hey, which CI type, if you have, like, a scan range where you say a, a search for these 10 different CI types. Okay. That it can differentiate. A proposed element name that's also configured in the CI type itself that can say, hey, I want to have this uh, mm -hmm. element name. By default, we put the connector name, dash, then the IP address to make it always unique. Yes. But you can change that in here if you want. Okay, so you can still adjust all of that just before you then yeah, do... Yeah, indeed. And then we also have some other information that's less relevant now. Mm -hmm. And now we have already found it. So let's yes. let's actually provision it. So we see now when you select a row, you yeah. have the button provision. Okay. When you click that, you will see, hey, there's a pop-up. But it will say... Wizard. Click wizard. It will say, hey, there are missing connectors. So it cannot find the maps of platform in production. Okay. But on the DAS system, you will notice if you go to protocol and templates that uh, maps of platform is already there, no, but, but not, not in set production. As production. Okay. So depending on your situation, you can have different error messages, uh, different scenarios. So it could be that mm -hmm. maps of platform is not installed yet, it's not set as correct production, or it's a connector that is not known to us. Okay. Or IDP. So. Okay, and then you do need to manually find the connector and pull it in there? Yeah, so okay. well, main, manually, we have made it a little bit easier. If it's a connector from Skyline, mm -hmm. we have here a button open catalog. Ah, and that just takes you to the page yeah. with my, okay. So where you can eat, immediately and then deploy. You deploy it. Okay. Of course, with Microsoft Platform, they always take note at the documentation because then it says, hey, we have here, for example, for VMs, yeah. we have a range, we have okay. for physical hardware. That's indeed a... 
So it's something to pay attention to, but mm -hmm. we already have it. Look, we have it. So already. we just need to set it in production. We just set it as production. There we go. I'm gonna guess we need to refresh that or reopen it or oh, there's a there we go. We have a refresh button already in You button. can also indeed close it and reopen it again, okay. depending on your preference or how long it takes, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, then you just click pro click provision. Okay. Into the final confirmation screen in case you have other provisionings that were not possible. Okay. And it will say how many elements it will create. And then you just click finish. Let's go to the surveyor. Well, it's already been there. It's can be very quickly if yeah. you just have one. Okay. So that's pretty awesome because we've gone through the IDP setup for a simple case in this case, yep. but we've set it to scan just the local. Uh, we've set it to use the default CI time that's included for Microsoft Platform. We had to do a little bit of configuration there, but that was to set the thing to production. Yeah. But that's pretty much it. Click, that's click. pretty much it because now we are already at the end of the entire kata. Oh, well. We installed <laughs> IDP, we discovered yeah. our server, and we created an element for it. And as you can see, the data is being pulled already. Okay. So that's perfect. Eh? If it's about automating provisioning and making things easy, you want it to be quick. And yes. And this was pretty quick. So imagine yeah. if you have a bigger network with a lot of Cisco routers, yeah, for example. Or, or yeah, just having a, a setup with 20 servers and you want to have the Microsoft platform of every server, yeah. quite easy to do. It just sets your scan range, and that's about it. Amazing. Okay, that's really awesome. Um, okay, then, I guess for everyone watching, let's take a screenshot of what should we have them take well, screen, maybe the IDP page itself? Yeah, so on IDP now itself, and mm -hmm. if you go back to here, under inventory, under okay. the managed table, you will now see, hey, we have now provisions. Managed elements. elements, okay. Okay, well, take a screenshot of this place where you have done this, um, yeah, this scan and this automatic provisioning through IDP. Um, and then we'll get you those nice DevOps points. Um, you won't get this shirt from it. You'll get this if you send in an AMA question. Remember that. But you'll get other stuff like amazing uh, sweaters and other t-shirts, of course. Um, other than that, Thank you very much for making yep. some time for showing no us this. Uh, was quick, was amazing to see. I hope everyone enjoys playing around with IDP. Um, and other than that, yeah, I guess I'll catch you guys later.